Some of the biggest and best tech companies are using it in production. It's very well supported, it's very well maintained, it's got a huge community behind it, and it's so powerful in areas of data science, machine learning, and even algorithmic trading. What's up everyone, welcome to this video. One of the questions that I'm getting a lot from you all, as well as friends, is what is the one programming language that you should learn um, during this lockdown or over the next couple of months if you've never programmed before. Now, many videos and answers online will answer this question by giving you long lists of programming languages, explaining the advantages, disadvantages, or they'll even say it depends. And let's face it, that's not gonna help anyone and that's just gonna make you more confused. So with that said, I'm gonna start off with the answer. I'm going to tell you right now that the number one programming language that you should learn if you've never programmed before is Python. Now you can leave the video right now and I won't be offended but if you stick around I'll tell you why Python is the best programming language to learn, what you can do with it um, and why it's probably not a good idea if you want to build a website or an app. Now Python is hands down the easiest programming language that you can learn. Um, I learned Python in about a week and I know I've been programming for many years and I've always said that if you know one language it's very easy to pick up another language but in saying that trust me Python is very easy to pick up for a beginner. It's one of the few languages where you can get very productive at the beginning by just knowing a few lines of Python code. And that's really important at the beginning when you want to focus on learning the fundamentals of the language. I know so many people who gave up programming just because they were told to learn a more advanced programming language and they just found it too difficult at the beginning. Now I know I've said that Python is very easy to learn but that's not to say that you can't do much with it. Some of the biggest and best tech companies in the world are using it in production. It's a very well supported, very well maintained language with a huge community behind it and it's so powerful in areas of machine learning, data science, and even algorithmic trading. To sum up, Python is the easiest programming language that you can learn right now, and you can build very cool programs with it. But before you rush off, it's probably not the best language if you want to build a website or an app. So if you're thinking about building a website, then I highly recommend that you learn another language called JavaScript. JavaScript is often termed as the language of the web. If you want to do anything with web development, then you're going to come into contact with JavaScript. So it's best that you start with JavaScript now to build a website. You can even use it to build apps, which I'll get onto in the next section. Now websites today are often made up of two parts. You have a front end and a back end. And these are terms that are thrown around a lot in the web development community. When you first visit Airbnb, for example, Everything that you see on the web page, including the text, the colors, the fonts, the styles, all of that makes up the front end. And that's essentially what you see. And to build that, you use HTML and CSS. These are two languages that describe the structure and the styles on the web page. So where does JavaScript come into this front end? Well, JavaScript enables you to have interaction on your website. If you visit Airbnb and you start entering the location, you're going to get suggestions and that's JavaScript kicking in. The moment you also click search, that's also JavaScript kicking in, responding to you clicking the search button and then populating results on the web page. Now I mentioned that a website is made up of a front end and a back end. And now that you know what a front end is, let's go over what a back end is. To give you an example, if you were to scroll down on this video and give it a thumbs up, JavaScript is used on the front end to recognize that you click the thumbs up button, but that data needs to be stored somewhere so that the next time you load this video, YouTube recognizes that you gave it a thumbs up so it doesn't ask you to give it a thumbs up again. Other examples are adding a friend on Facebook or following someone on Twitter or putting out a tweet. These are all different data pieces that need to be stored somewhere and that's what a backend is responsible for. The reason why it's termed a backend is because it happens in the background and it's what you don't see, whereas the front end, as I mentioned, is what you do see when you visit a web page. Now that you know to build a website, you need a front end and a back end, and that you can use JavaScript to build the front end. So the question is, how do you build the back end? Well, guess what? You can use JavaScript too. Amazing, right? This is really where JavaScript shines, and this is a reason why so many web developers love JavaScript, because they don't have to learn another language to build a back end they can just use JavaScript, both on the front end and the back end. And that's what makes it great. Now, if you wanna build an app, ideally you want it to run both on iPhones and on Android phones. 
And to do that, you typically would need to learn two languages. One is called Swift, which is used to build iPhone apps. And the other is Java or Kotlin, which are used to build Android apps. Now, luckily technology has come a long way. So we no longer need to learn two languages to build the same app to run on both iPhone and on Android phones. You only need to know one language. Now there's many frameworks available that let you build apps that run both on iPhones and on Android phones using one language. The one I recommend is called React Native. It was created by Facebook and it's still being developed by them. And guess what it's written in? JavaScript. As a side note, this is one of the amazing reasons why you should learn JavaScript, especially if you're looking to become a web developer or if you're thinking about building apps, you can use the same language to do both. So to wrap up, if you want to build an app, I recommend that you learn JavaScript with React Native. You can build some really good applications and there are some great tutorials online. So I hope this video was helpful in you figuring out which programming language to learn. If you did enjoy it, please do click the thumbs up button below. It only takes a second and it will help me out a lot. Um, I am going to be making more videos like this about Python, about JavaScript, about React Native. So if you want to be notified of them, click the subscribe button too. Um, by the way, I am keeping an eye on the comment section. So if you have any suggestions, if you have any questions about programming, if you need help, just let me know, drop a comment below and I'll take a look and I'll reply. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a lovely day. See ya. It's one of the few languages where you can get pretty productive pretty quickly.